Stephen Jaffe, thank you for joining us on No More Fool's Day, April 1st. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be back. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see you again. Uh, I asked you how you were doing in Green Room, and you just said tired. I imagine you are going through what you guys are campaigning. And, and so tell everybody um, why you decided to run in general. Well, um, a lot of people know that uh, those of us in San Francisco think we live in the greatest place in the world and everything here, uh, we have the best. But there's one thing San Francisco lacks, <laughs> and, that is a, and that is a voice in the U.S. Congress. Uh, the incumbent uh, in the U.S. Con Congress uh, in the 12th District is completely out of touch and disconnected with uh, her constituents. And I'm running to give San Francisco the voice that uh, it deserves and needs in the Congress. That's the short version. And, and I thank you. That pretty much sums it up. I think uh, not only is it it's San Francisco, but um, the person you're trying to replace is somebody that nationally we we take issue with as progressives. Uh, so it's a big challenge. And you're out there uh, hitting the road, doing all sorts of stuff. I, I, I would go our normal route, but I wanted to just, you know, you've been dealing with some issues within the Democratic Party here. And you've, there's a lawsuit going on. Can you just talk on that really bit? What's what's happening with that? Uh, well, California has uh, something which I think ought to be rid of, which is um, incumbents who want to run for the same office receive an automatic endorsement of the state party. The only way to challenge that is for the challenger to collect 20% of the signatures of all the delegates in the district, um, which is relevant to the challenge. Um, I did that, and uh, then I was told after I turned in enough signatures that I had not turned in enough signatures because the state party said it was using a list with more delegates on it than the list that it had given me. Um, in other words, they changed the rules after the game was over, moved the goalposts. There's a lot of ways to say it. Sure, they so cheated. That, <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. That's the gist of, of the litigation is uh, that they should not be able to do that. And um, that's uh, that's the um, substance of the lawsuit. OK. OK. And, and all right, so they're not playing friendly with you is what it comes down to. And it's come at a lot of expense and a lot of time lost, I'm guessing, as you're running uh, in, in this office. Right. Um, expense for sure. Um, time. Yes, a little bit. But um, I feel that it's important uh, for me and for other progressives not to just cave in when these kinds of tactics are used. Uh, there is a statewide policy and probably a national policy coming out of the DNC to uh, keep incumbents in office and suppress progressive challengers. That's the best way I could say it. Absolutely. So, um, I'm one of those progressive challengers. My colleague down in LA, Maria Estrada, who's uh, running to unseat the assembly speaker, Anthony Rendon, um, she's got the same kind of lawsuit going, not a little different on the facts, but uh, the same cheating kind of allegations in it. And yeah. I think it's important for progressives to stand up. Absolutely. I mean, I, th thank you for saying that, because that seems to be a defining piece, I think, between progressives and corporate Democrats is we've got uh, uh, one side resisting and not really moving anywhere and another side that's trying to push forward. We we, we want change. We, 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 it's, it's time to shake things up. Right. Yeah, and nobody, no incumbent is ever going to voluntarily give up the power they have. It's got to be taken, yeah. and that's uh, what I intend to do. Absolutely, it's yeah, it's time to go on the offensive in in in, in that in that regard. And I appreciate you you doing that. You really have have been on that. Uh, it, it, we you know a lot of us in the progressive movement understand why Nancy Pelosi is foolish. But are there specific things that you want to change in San Francisco uh, that are on top of your list? Um, well, there's a lot of um, issues um, that are peculiar to San Francisco and peculiar to local uh, governance. Yes. But the ones that but the ones that touch mostly on um, the possibility of federal remedies. Yes. Um, I think our worst problem, our worst two problems in San Francisco, are homelessness and uh, the cost of housing, which is just 
when I say it's through the roof, that doesn't even really begin to describe it. Right. And uh, that's got to be addressed. Um, and there, and those two, uh, to use a new word that's in vogue these days, they intersect with each other. Um, one of the major causes of homelessness is evictions and gentrification, and that's because corporate Democrats pander to uh, real estate developers and uh, landlords. And uh, I think that the, one of the ways to stop that is is to get the federal government involved and use whatever possible resources can be used. What I have in mind on homelessness is if I get elected and when I get elected, I'm going to immediately contact uh, both FEMA and the Surgeon General and have FEMA declare a disaster area in San Francisco and wow. have the Surgeon General or the CDC declare a health emergency and move resources in here and try and take care of a problem which uh, the city either is unwilling or unable to do. Wow. That's like some immediate direct action. Are you sure you don't want to hold back and have a study and take a little? It's too soon for that, Steve. Yeah, uh, I appreciate the sarcasm. Thank <laughs> Sorry. you. Sorry, I just, just got to go. It just seems like, you know, in one of the most progressive states in the country, you would have seen progress faster in terms of the homelessness and inequality going on there. And, and uh, one would think so. Yeah. One would think so. But uh, it's getting worse. And uh, San Francisco, the city, has a quarter billion with a B dollar budget to deal with homelessness, and it just keeps getting worse. Yeah, it doesn't sound like there's solutions. And, and, and we know that I, I know, having looked at the donation list for Pelosi, that there's a lot of realist. There's a lot of reasons on there why it hasn't changed. You know what I'm saying? Well, of course. And, and um, Pelosi, of course, talks about all the time how much money she raises for the party. And then right. she forgets to say from whom she's getting it. Right. She's getting it from corporations, for-profit insurance companies, health care providers, real estate developers. And people who have a stake in having these problems we're discussing not fixed. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, we're, we're running short on time. Tell everybody where you're going to be next. I know you're always on the road. Where can they meet you next to support you or hear more from you? Um, well, I'll tell you where I'm going to be next. I'm going to be hitting the streets of San Francisco. Oh. Um, sounds like an old TV yes, show. Yes, it does. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I've been going, you know, I've been running for a year now and I've been to, uh, I've lost count of the meetings, the endorsement meetings. Right. I've been doing house parties and fundraising, but most of my time between now and uh, the beginning of absentee voting, which is, believe it or not, 32 days away, 32 wow. days away, people will start voting absentee balance. I'm going to be on the streets talking to people, which I've been doing for a year handing out my literature and knocking on doors. Wow, that's awesome. And what? Uh, so where can they go to support you, Stephen? It, uh, the website is Jaffe for Congress with the number four dot com. That's also the Facebook page. That's also the Twitter page. Um, they all have uh, donations on there. And if you're feeling particularly generous uh, and impulsive, it's donate for Congress dot com. There you go. And I know you're active on Twitter, and I think that's really you. So uh, everybody, when you donate to Stephen, please share with hashtag no more fools and mention him and we'll we'll get back with you with a thanks. So uh, let's let's help Stephen because he's going against somebody who can raise gobs of money. And then she takes that money and does nothing for you with it. She uh, votes for donors. There you go. There she you does go. not vote her constituents. Awesome. Stephen Jaffe, thank you so much for being with and joining us uh, right now and con continue the progressive fight, sir. Thank you for having me back on. I look forward to being back on again. Yes, I'm hoping you and I can do a town hall down there with some other progressives covering some general issues. We'll yeah, or, or a debate. I will say it right now. Nancy, if you're willing, we're here. Uh, or anybody else you'd like to challenge to a debate, call them out right now. Anybody who's Nancy against Pelosi you. has not debated an opponent since 1987. Here's your chance to practice, Nancy. You're going to need it. You're going to need it. Correct. Thanks very much. Thanks, Stephen. See you later.